What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here, and today I'm gonna show you how to set up your R-Track 2x2 USB recording interface. As you can see, it comes with the interface itself, a USB cable to connect the interface to your computer, and a USB power cable with a power block. So the first thing we can do is take the USB power cable and the USB power block, plug the power end into the back of the interface, then take the other end and plug it into your USB block, and then plug this end into a power outlet. So now to connect the interface to the computer, we're gonna take the USB cable, plug this end into the back of the interface, then plug the other end into a USB port on your computer. Now a lot of the newer Macs like this one here have USB-C ports instead of USB-A ports, so you may need an adapter like this one here to connect your interface to your computer. So you'll take the USB and plug it into a USB-A port on your adapter, then plug the USB-C end into a USB-C port on your Mac. So now we wanna select the interface to be used Used by our computer in the sound settings here. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the Apple icon and go down to system preferences. I'm then gonna wanna go into the sound menu. So now in the input and output menu, I'm gonna search for the device that says R-Track 2x2 and click on it. Again, you're gonna wanna do this for the output device as well. So now that I've got the sound preferences set to recognize my interface, I'm actually gonna wanna do the same exact thing for my DAW. So for today, I'm using Logic Pro X, but this is also gonna apply for any other DAWs you're using like Ableton, Pro Tools, etc. So now to do this in Logic, I'm gonna go to the Logic Pro folder here and scroll down to preferences. I'm then gonna select the audio window here and then you'll see we have drop down menus for the output device and the input device. So I'm gonna click on those windows, search for our track two by two and select that for both the output and input device. Click apply. And now from here we're all set so we can close the window and then head on to recording. Now the cool thing is once we've done all of these steps for Max, we won't have to do it again. So if I were to unplug my interface from my computer and plug it back in, your computer is automatically gonna remember the R track and you can always double check by going into the sound preferences and looking for the output and input device to read R track two by two. So now that we know how to set up the interface with a Mac, let's go over now how to set the interface up to a PC. Now if you haven't already, you're gonna take the power USB cable, plug the female end into the back of the interface, then plug the other end into the USB block, and then plug that into an outlet. So now to connect the interface to the computer, we're gonna take our USB cable, plug this end right into the back of the interface, then plug the other end into a USB port on your computer. So now the next thing to do is download the drivers so that the interface can communicate with the PC. To do that, we're gonna go to rockvillesupport.com and hover over to the search by model button here. Then once we click on it, you'll see that we have this search menu here. From there, we're gonna wanna look up r-track 2x2. And once you see it pop up, you can click on it, click on the downloads tab. And then from here, we can download the drivers for the r-track 2x2. From there, we can open up the download, click yes if this window pops up. Choose whichever language you prefer. And as soon as this window pops up, you can click on install the driver. From there, we're gonna reboot our computer to finish the install. So once your computer is restarted, we can go to the bottom right corner here by the sound icon, right click on it and open the sound settings. And then from here, we can choose what output and input we want set to our computer. So we're gonna go to the drop down menu so we can use the R track two by two. Remember, you're gonna wanna do this for both the output and the input. So now that we figured out the sound settings for our computer, we're then gonna wanna do the same exact thing on whatever DAW we're using. So in this case, we're gonna use Audacity here and then we're able to choose what we wanna use for the input and output with these drop-down menus. So I'll go next to this microphone icon here to pick the input, click on the drop-down menu here and select the R-Track 2x2, and do the same exact thing for the output by going next to this sound icon here and selecting the R-Track 2x2. Now for the rest of the video, I'm gonna go back to using my Mac, but remember, if you're following along on your PC, that all the steps are the exact same. Now if we take a look at the back of the interface, you'll see that we have two sets of outputs. So we have the left and right quarter inch unbalanced main outputs, and we also have the balanced XLR left and right outputs. So you can use either of these depending on what your speakers have. So for example, mine have actually a combo jack input, so you can use XLR or quarter inch cables. So for today, I'm gonna be using two quarter inch cables to connect my speakers. So I'll plug one end into the quarter inch outputs on the back of the interface. Then I'll take the other end and plug it into the quarter inch input on the back of my speakers. 
You'll also want to be sure that the left output goes to the left speaker in your setup and the right output goes to the right speaker in your setup. Now if your speakers have XLR inputs only, you're going to take two of your XLR cables, plug the female ends into the back of the interface, then plug the male ends into the back of your speakers. Now typically you're only going to be using one of these outputs for your speakers, so this leaves the other one open for external gear. Next you'll want to set the volume on your speakers to whatever suits best for your room. And then we can set the volume for whatever is coming out of our interface with the big master knob here. And now if I play something from my DAW, you'll be able to hear it coming out of the speakers. And remember, you can use the master knob to adjust the volume. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're recording in the same room that your speakers are set up in, you won't want the music coming out of the speakers because then it's going to be picked up by your microphone. So thankfully we have a solution for that with the headphone jack right on the front of the interface. So I can take the quarter inch end of my headphones and plug them right into the phone's input on the front of my interface. From here I can turn the master volume down all the way on the front. And now I can use the phone's knob here for the main volume coming out of my headphones. So now when I play anything from my computer I'll be able to hear it from my headphones which is ideal for recording right in the same room as your speakers. We also have the mono and stereo button on the front of the interface so we can switch the mix coming out of our interface either to mono mode or stereo mode. In stereo mode, you'll be able to hear everything coming out of both speakers depending on the stereo image. So for example, if you had a track set over to the left speaker and a track set to the right speaker, you'll be able to hear the left coming out of the left and the right coming out of the right. And in mono mode, everything coming out of the left and right speakers will be the exact same because it's a sum signal coming out. This is useful for mixing or playback if you want to emulate sound coming out of your phone, which is in mono anyway. So now that we've got our speakers set up to our interface, we can then move on to recording. So on the front of the interface, you'll see that we have two input channels with input one and input two. On both inputs, you can plug in a microphone or line level input, but you can also use channel two specifically if you wanna plug in a guitar or bass. Both inputs have a combo jack, so you can plug in an XLR or quarter inch cable. Both inputs also have a phantom power button for your condenser microphones. Channel 1 has a pad button to lower the input signal by 25 dB, and channel 2 has a high Z button that can be used for your guitar or bass. There's also a gain knob for each channel to raise the input volume for your instruments or microphones. There's also a signal and a peak light for your input so you can tell how much gain you need exactly. So when we plug in a microphone or instrument and we have the input coming through, you'll see that the signal light pops up to let you know that it's receiving signal. And if it's too loud, you'll see the peak light coming through. So whenever that pops up, you can lower the input volume a bit or you can use the pad button if it's too extreme. So first let's go over how to set up a dynamic microphone to the interface. So here I have my dynamic mic and an XLR cable. I'm gonna plug the female end into the microphone. Then I can plug the other end into either input one or two. So for today, let's go for input one. Before you plug your mic or instrument in, you can lower the master knob all the way down to avoid any unwanted noise coming out of your speakers. Before we do anything else, we can set up the track for our microphone to our DAW. So when we set up the input for the track, we're gonna wanna make sure to select input one since we plugged it into input one on our interface. Next, we can raise the gain knob on input one. And now if I talk into my microphone, check one, two, you'll see that the input is coming in on the track itself, and you'll see the signal light come on on your input. And remember, if you're recording in the same room that your speakers are set up in, you can use the headphones to hear yourself when recording. And now we're all set to hit record. Check one, two, this is Perry from Rockville using the R-Track 2x2. So now if we wanna hear that back, we can lower the gain on our channel, and raise the master volume so we hear it coming out of our speakers. Check one, two, this is Perry from Rockville using the R-Track 2x2. So now if we wanna set up a condenser microphone, we're gonna follow a lot of the same steps. So we're gonna take our XLR cable, plug the female end into our microphone, then plug the other end into one of the inputs on our interface. Again, we'll use input one. Now the main difference between using a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone is that you wanna use phantom power to power your condenser microphone. So to power the condenser microphone, we're gonna press the phantom power button here on our channel. Then we're gonna wanna raise the gain knob on the same channel. And again, for recording, you'll wanna make sure that your track is set to input one. And now if I talk into the microphone, you'll see that the input is coming in on the track and the signal light is coming on on the interface. So now we can go ahead and hit record. Check one, two, this is Perry from Rockville using the condenser with the R-Track two by two. 
So now let's hear that back. Check one, two, this is Perry from Rockville using the condenser with the R-Track 2x2. Now when you're recording, you'll also want to pay attention to the monitoring knob here. So when you have this set all the way to the left for direct mode, you're only hearing everything coming directly into the interface and nothing coming out of your computer. And when you have it set all the way to the right for DAW mode, you're hearing everything coming from your computer and your DAW, including what you have inputted from your interface. And you can blend between these so you have the right mix for your recording setup. So now to set up a guitar to the interface, I have my guitar right here and a quarter inch instrument cable, which is important to use because if you don't use an instrument cable, you might get a lot of noise in your recording. I'm gonna plug one end into the quarter inch of my guitar. Then I'm gonna take the other end and plug it into input two since we can use it specifically for guitars, bass, or other instruments. So next I'm gonna to wanna to raise the gain knob here for my input. Then I can press the high Z button to raise the impedance for my input, which is good to use for guitars or basses. And now in my DAW, I'll wanna set my track to input two since we're using input two on the interface. Remember we can adjust the gain knob if we need more volume coming from our guitar. And you can also use the signal light to make sure that the signal is coming into the interface and you can also refer to the peak light if you have too much volume coming in. Before we start recording we'll also want to pay attention to the monitoring knob here. So when we have this all the way to the left in direct mode this means we'll hear everything coming directly into the interface and if we have this set all the way to the right for DAW mode this means we'll hear everything coming from our DAW and computer which also includes the inputs that we have set up on our interface. You can also blend this knob between the two modes for whatever suits your recording setup. Setup. So next we'll want to be sure to raise the volume on our guitar and if I start to strum the guitar You'll see that the input is coming through our track here And you'll also see the signal light light up on our interface. So now we can go ahead and record a sample Now if you wanted to record a bass or synthesizer, you're actually gonna follow the same exact steps. And the really cool thing about this interface is that you don't need a DI box for these setups. So now that we know how to record an instrument or microphone with our interface, let's talk about some advanced settings. First, you'll wanna be sure to check the bit depth and sample rate for your DAW and make sure that it lines up for whatever your project needs. So for producing music, you'll wanna be sure to set the bit depth to 24 bit and the sample rate to 44.1 kilohertz. If you're working on audio for a film or video, you can set your sample rate to 48 kilohertz and your bit depth to 16 bit. And the cool thing about the R-Track 2x2 is that you can record audio with sample rates up to 192 kilohertz. And there's no set rules by any means for these preferences, so be sure to experiment and find the settings that fit your needs. Another thing we'll want to account for is the buffer size. This setting is important for latency issues, so if you're recording with a microphone or instrument, we want to use this setting to adjust the latency or lag between the microphone or instrument when recording onto our DAW. So in most cases, the lower you have your buffer size set to, the less latency you'll get. But going for higher buffer sizes like 512 or 1024 is less demanding on your computer. So we recommend setting your buffer size as low as possible when recording or tracking and bumping it up when you're listening back or mixing. Just be sure to set these settings to your computer's performance and set it higher if your computer is experiencing any system overloads. Now on the back of the interface, we have a MIDI in so we can send MIDI information from a controller like a keyboard, drum pad right into the interface. And we also have a MIDI out so we can send MIDI from our computer out to an analog piece of gear like keyboards, drum pads, etc. So to sum it up, we would use the MIDI in if we want to trigger the software instrument from an external controller and use the MIDI out to send a pre-composed MIDI file out to an analog synth so that it's playing without us even touching it. So first we'll start with the MIDI in. So to start I'm gonna open up a software instrument which on Logic Pro X is done like this. Next I'm gonna take a 5 pin MIDI cable, plug one end into the MIDI in on my interface, then plug the other end into the MIDI out on my controller. So from here I can choose any synth that I want to have loaded up on my channel here. And now if I play on my keyboard, you'll see that it starts to play. So now to show how the MIDI out works, we have this composed MIDI file here that we want to send out to the keyboard. 
So now I'm gonna take one end of my MIDI cable and plug it into the MIDI out on my interface, then plug the other end into the MIDI in on my keyboard. So next I'm gonna wanna go into my DAW and create an external MIDI track, and then I'm gonna take the MIDI data that I recorded earlier and place it down onto that track. And now I have my synth plugged into my amp here so we can hear the data coming through the synth and out of the speaker. And now if I press play, you'll be able to hear the MIDI coming out of our interface into our synth and out of our speaker. So now if I wanted to record that back into my DAW, I can take an instrument cable, plug one end into the output of my synth, then plug the other end into the input on my interface. Next, I'm gonna set up an audio track on my DAW, set it up to input one since we plugged the synth into input one. And now if I hit record, you'll see the signal coming through our track and hitting the DAW. Now to hear it back, I can mute my external MIDI channel. And now we can play what we recorded. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your R-Track 2x2 recording interface, but if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.